Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Spiritual Spotlight series. Today, I'm joined by Ahira Smith. She is a certified grief coach who helps others navigate through their own grief journey. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm really happy you're here. Um, grief right now, I feel like a lot of people are going through grief and there's not a lot of certified grief coaches. I'm sure you're, you probably feel that too. Do you feel that actually? Do you see a lot of, I don't see a lot of certified grief coaches. You know what? There, it's starting to become um, much more known. Of course, there's grief counselors, there's yeah. grief therapists. Uh, but as far as a grief coach is concerned, not so much. But because of the pandemic and a lot of stuff that's happened since then, I do see that there are more people who are inquiring about mm. either becoming a grief coach or looking to work with one. So, yeah, I would agree with you. So grief can be an overwhelming and complex emotion. As a certified grief coach, can you maybe share a story of a particular transformation that you've guided one of your clients through? A particular transformation, did you say? Um, as far as my journey as being a grief coach is concerned? Yeah, I guess, let me ask you, Ooh. I can deepen it a little bit. So how did your okay. coaching help them navigate their grief and find a path towards healing and maybe living more present in their life. So the thing about a grief coach mm -hmm. is that I deal with the present moment at hand okay. uh, versus that of a therapist or mm -hmm. counselor where they may do a deeper dive behind the scenes in terms of where things might have started five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, or even a childhood, depending on who they're working with, where okay. I focus on the present. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, I've come in contact with people who, you know, tend to be walking around lifeless mm. or kind of like the walking dead, like they're, they're, they're here, but they're not present, yeah. you know? And so with a, as a grief coach, my opportunity is to help them formulate a blueprint, mm -hmm. help them map out how they want to take this journey yeah, and provide the support along the ride. Right. Um, an example, oh my goodness. <laughs> I've had a lot of classmates. I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm trying to, um, you know, be mindful. I had a lot of classmates mm -hmm. who have lost parents. Mm -hmm. And so with that, uh, that has definitely um, that has also that has definitely was placed on my heart in in in, in my on my assignment <laughs> from above to to look into being a support system um, in terms of the world of grief because I'm comfortable with it. I, I wasn't always comfortable with it, but I am, and so. So one of the, one of the things that you do that you you've mentioned is that you're really trying to help people be present and, you know, like, like you're going to tackle today. So do you find that a lot, like you said, you know, a lot of your clients are walking around like the walking dead or probably before they get to you, do you find that it's a challenge to get them to kind of get into the moment of truly being present in today? Absolutely. Absolutely, because we don't give ourselves permission to grieve. Okay. We've we've ne we were never taught to give our permission. We were never taught to give ourselves permission to grieve. Mm -hmm. So that in itself speaks volumes. You know, you you can't you can't expect to talk about it or walk through mm -hmm. if you don't even allow yourself to do that. Uh, you, for people who work in different companies or organizations, you know, heaven forbid if, uh, if a person's loved one passes away, nine times out of 10, these companies or organizations only give any, give about maybe two or three days of bereavement and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, for people, we don't know what people are dealing with prior to that. You know, there's so many different faces of grief. I've been an anticipation grief you know a, a grief where somebody's loved one was dealing with dementia so that's just been anticipating on uh, of, on top of the grief that they're currently feeling and then when that look passes away then you have to do the preparations 
And honestly, there is, there, there is no preparation. There's no preparation. Yeah. The preparations when I when I use that, I'm talking about you know the the you know the the, the logistics. You know how did they want it there? You know did they want to cremate? Did they want to be buried? Did they want this? Did they want that? What? How long? How short? That in itself is a process, very much so. And then even when they're laid to rest, and even when you know you um, the 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 last of the guests are gone, guess you still have their belongings you have to deal with. Then you have the, the executive state situation. Did they have a will? Did they not have a will? You know, so it's, it's more than just, it's, it's more than just a three day trip. You know, it's, it's a journey. You are 100% correct. My um, brother committed suicide about six years ago. And I remember, oh, wow, I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you. I remember I was on call because I'm, I'm a registered nurse and I was working on call. And when I called my boss, I'm like, I can't be on call right now. Like I, my brother committed, like, I don't even know what's going on. And then you're right. I didn't really get space to really mourn and grieve and process and, and like you said, it's a multi-layered, you know, event that we go through. Like you said, do you want to be cremated? Do they have a will? Do they have this? Like, that's just, you know, logistics. And then you're also talking about layering in all of those emotions. Like it's, it's profound. It's a profound journey when you go through a grieving process. And, and I appreciate the fact that you, that this is something you help people through because like you said, like, especially in the United States, like we don't, we don't give people space for being in grief. I don't even, I don't even think of so much the fact we don't give people space. We just, there's not a safe space to grieve. I like that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the bigger issue. You know, there are people who may have space, but is it safe for them to grieve? As you just mentioned mm -hmm. here in the United yeah. States, you know, we don't do that. But if you go to other parts of the world, like in Asia and China and in and, and parts of Africa and, and other countries in India, oh, they 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 scream, they they cry, they yeah. they celebrate the life. They are they ex they are very um that you know they 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 express themselves in such a manner that it's like, what did I just witness here? And it's like it's a celebration of life. We're here. You have people who are still call on call, like yourself, or people who, like, here's a message. I'm I'm going to be unavailable for the next week, and people are still sending messages. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And I know for me, when it happened to me when I lost my my dad in in 18, uh, trust and believe, I was ghost. Yeah, I'm like, don't <laughs> even come to me like that I don't care <laughs> you know so I, I I it was it was probably the first time um the first time I actually had used my voice and actually recognized that no was a sentence yeah and I'm like y'all want to leave me alone no <laughs> so yeah I like that you also you established your boundaries and you said no I, I can't I'm it's good essential. It's essential. We, again, that's where that safe space comes into play. I, I, the way I am able to be in a safe space is I got to have boundaries. And mm. if the boundaries are not in place, I don't feel safe. Yeah, absolutely. Because people will start projecting what they have onto me. And I'm like, I'm in a state of grief. You don't want me to come at, you don't want me to respond right. You don't want what you. I'm going to give you. <laughs> right. Because listen, Listen, one thing about this, um, there's no blueprint to it and everybody grieves differently. Right. And even though a lot of times when you hear about grief, people are like, oh, the, here's the stages of grief. And I went through this stage. Or I went through that stage. And now I'm at this stage. Erase that. <laughs> Whatever mm. we were taught in elementary school, middle school, forget it. You're going to be all over the place. Think of the best. Here's the best way I can explain it. Think of like the top 10 explosive roller coaster rides in the world. Now, imagine that they're all conjoined together and it runs nonstop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's grief. 
for for people for some yeah. not all people but for some people depending on the relationship depending on the type of grief uh you know a, a, no parent wants to ever outlive a child yeah. so when you're dealing with that yes it's all over the place no no even though in the natural order of things that your parents are supposed to go before you mm -hmm. You spend 40 years, 40 plus years with a parent that's no longer here. You're still on that roller coaster ride. I, I can honestly say that I'm still on that ride. And yeah. my father's been gone since 2018 and my mother was um, 2020. So mm. I'm still on the ride. Yeah. It's just, it's not as long with them, but guess what? There's still other griefs that are happening in, in life. You know, there's grief at work. There's grief with, um, with maintenance issues with a car or, great, uh, or um, grief in terms of your optimum health, you know, or, or grief of relationships. Um, you might've been in a relationship for 25 years and then the pandemic hit and then all of a sudden they want a divorce. They want to get separated. That's a grief in itself. And then people that you are close with, classmates mm. who are the same age as you don't make it to 50 and that's a grief in itself. So Grief doesn't stop. Grief does not discriminate. It keeps right. going. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Right. Absolutely. So with your extensive experience in higher ed, how do you find that your background in education complements your role as a grief coach? So in higher education, I was an academic advisor. <laughs> so I worked with a multitude of people with God bless different you, number issues. One. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you see why I'm a grief coach. No, you like, I had to grieve this. <laughs> uh, but no, um, I was an advisor hmm. um, in higher ed for more than 15 plus years. And I saw a lot and uh, a lot of students and staff, um, you know, had a, a way of coming to speak with me about certain things that wasn't necessarily on the on the schedule like advisement and for classes mm. um i'm an empath and i i have um i just came into recogn recognizing that i'm an mm. empath the past three years since the pandemic and now i'm learning more about it studying it understanding the the different types of empaths and how that will afford me the the, the ability to be of service of others so sitting talk having conversations with people about things it it comes very natural mm. and it it i don't want to necessarily say it kind of prepared me to be a grief however i will say that because of what i've heard and what i experienced and what i witnessed it was one of the reasons why i became a grief coach wow that that's very and it's an interesting transition you know, um, from being in higher ed to being a grief coach. But like you said, you recently, well, not recently, in the last couple of years, identify that you're an empath, meaning you're, you're yeah. feeling all the feels, you're, you're soaking oh. in all of that energy. And, and I, yeah. let me ask you this as a grief coach, how do you protect your energetic body when people are coming to you in such vulnerable and sad states? I'm still learning. I'll say that I don't have it down to, uh, I don't have it down pat just mm -hmm. yet, but I, 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 again, once I recognize and I, and I understood what my role is as an empath, mm -hmm. that's when I started to, um, pay attention to triggers, Yeah. pay attention to, um, what my boundaries, where my boundaries need to be in place. I'll give you an example. Um, last week, there was somebody who rubbed me the wrong way. And I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. But there was just something about the way that this person spoke at me mm. that put me off to where I'm like, you know what? I need to stay away from you. There are three types of way, in my opinion, there are three, there are three ways to communicate with somebody. Mm -hmm. You talk at them, you talk to them, or you talk with them. I'm a person where I will speak with you. There may be times when I need to talk to you, mm -hmm. but if it ever, if it ever gets to a point where I'm talking at you, it's a no-go zone. 
see i know my boundaries <laughs> Just, let's let's not let's not go at let's not go at because words are very powerful yeah i believe then, in manifestation yeah. all of that so i'm very mindful of what i say mm -hmm. and 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 i'm i'm mindful of what i say now how people interpret that's something i have no control over but Absolutely. i can be mindful of what i say and I also want to say that you trusted your intuitive sense, your discernment, yes. and your and yes. you're like, listen, I you're not for me. Thank you. Oh you yeah. Know? Oh, absolutely. And and I, honestly, I had to learn that. There were some tough lessons I had to learn. Um, some relationships I dealt with. My goodness, There's some of the relationships I I dealt with on a personal level. You know, um, <laughs> I was vibrate. Uh, you know. As an empath, mm -hmm. I, I have a tendency to be, um, I, I had, I say that in past tense, I had a tendency to be drawn to people who were narcissistic or had say, narcissistic are they narcissists? Behavior. Yep. That's what happened. And when I, and when, and it, because, because we're like magnets. And that's also because of the low vibration mm -hmm. pathway that was going on between me and these people. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that, oh my gosh, you are so low, you're so vibrating on a low level. I did, I, I realized that I too was at that level. That's mm -hmm. why I got drawn in. Gotcha. And so once I recognized that and I said, I know this no longer resonates with me, I'm gone. I pull away. I, yeah. I, I, I'm done. So, Absolutely. yeah, but, Absolutely. but I had, to, but I had to learn some tough lessons to get to that point. So the path from healing to grief is unique for each individual, like you mentioned. Can you maybe share some key pieces of advice or practices that you might recommend to your clients as they navigate through their journey? So one of the things they could do, obviously, is to, well, first, they need to give themselves permission to grieve. Mm. That's that's essential. Okay. Another thing that they should do is definitely speak with someone. Now, whether that's with me as a grief coach, or they want to talk to a therapist, or they want to talk to a counselor, by all means, do so. Um, mm -hmm. We we all have a, a, a we all have a role of support that's available. Mm -hmm. You may resonate better with a therapist versus a coach or you may resonate better with a coach than a counselor it's just what is it that you need at that moment and then just go from there it's not a one size fits all right because great grief is not one size fits all so it's just what is best for you at that moment mm -hmm. and then when you are able to establish that um connection you know eventually or you know hopefully you'll be able to be in a position where you will be able to honor the grief mm -hmm. that you're feeling regardless if it's a past one a loved one passed away a, a former relationship um a, a, a job you're no longer working um you know you're no longer living in the house that you grew up in you know mm -hmm. you'll be able to honor it and then know that you're going to learn through many trials and stages and many conversations that it is something you're going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. You can't get around it. You can't get underneath it. You can't get over it. You're going to have to go through it and learn to move forward with it because right. it's a part of who you are now. It's, it's, it is what is present at this moment. You know, it might not have been like that five months ago, and it certainly may not be to the same degree five months later, but it's where you are right now, you know? So make sure you give yourself permission to grieve, make sure you honor the grief. And then eventually when you go down the road and you notice the, those father, those holidays, birthdays, those, those poignant moments, oh, this is the day we did this, or that's the, that was the place we had that you know, you'll be able to see that there's greatness in grief because there is. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that greatness in grief. You're right. When we do have profound losses, I, it's, 
I do like the fact that now we, there are certain days and certain moments where we really honor and respect the ones that have passed away. And, you know, it's a beautiful, it's more sad, but it's still a beautiful day and a beautiful experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. My, my father's birthday is coming up on um, the 24th of this month. And so um, am I anticipating it that it might be a heavy day? Um, I believe so. I'm, I'm going to have some moments and, and that's okay because I'm still going to pay honor to him by either maybe getting a piece of key lime pie, you know, or listening to his music, you know, something Aww. to celebrate him, you know, so, but you, you'll find that you, you'll design what that, what that roadmap that, uh, that book looks like for you. Mm-hmm. So. So you have a podcast and a YouTube show called It's Not You, It's Grief. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about that? I love the title, number one. Thank Um, you. (laughs) It's a great title. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So this came, this came up. um, (laughs) So here's how it it came to be. This is how it came to be. So a lot of people. A, a couple of people have mentioned how well I am when it comes to grief. And I'm like, you have so many, you have a voice, you have a story to tell. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't, I don't want to talk about this no more. <laughs> I don't want to keep talking about grief. And they're like, you really have a way of speaking about this subject. You should really do a podcast. So mm-hmm. lo and behold, I was like, all right. And so um, March 5th of 2023, I launched my podcast called It's Not You, It's, it's Grief. It's mm-hmm. on Spotify. And I, it's on YouTube. And so what is so significant about that particular day is that my father passed away and we held his funeral March 5th, 2018 at 11 o'clock. My mother passed away two years later and her funeral was held March 5th, 2020 at six o'clock. So my parents both had their homegoing services two years apart to the exact day, Aww. off by a couple of hours. So when the idea came about of this podcast and the day happens to fall on a Sunday, because I had already decided when when I saw the date this year was March 5th and it was on a Sunday, I'm like, that's my day. That's the day I got to launch it. I got to mm-hmm. do it and I'm going to do it for like that. And then it just went from there. Yeah. So, Yeah. I love that. It's yeah. let's say it again. The title, it's not you, it's grief. It's on YouTube. It's, and it's, it's not on, you. It's, it's grief. not you. Yep. It's I love that. I mean, because it's so true. Right. Just, like, I mean, the moment. And and honestly, you know, it's it's true because you know, it's like you know those relationships, but it's not you, it's such and such. Or it's not you, it's me. So instead of saying it's me, it's like it's not you, it's yeah. grief. It's so, so true. That, that's why I came up with it. I love it. <laughs> One of the things you said about your mom and your dad was that they had a home go- going service. I've never yeah. heard that term before. Can you allow, mm-hmm. I mean, is that like how you say that they're going back to heaven or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you tell me a little bit more no, about that? No. I love that title. Not, not at all. So um, in some parts of the African-American community, mm-hmm. instead of us saying a funeral, because yeah. we, it, it can be such a, a I don't want to say a Debbie Downer, but it can be such a, a sad occasion. Yeah. We try to celebrate our ancestors and we just know that our parents, um, you know, are going home. So it's yeah. a home going celebration for them. And so it's a term that we use um, when we're, we are saying goodbye and, and paying respect to our elders who are no longer here. Yeah. And like, it's a home going service. Um, and, and it's something that we, it's a term that we use often in the mm. African-American community in spirituality. That, that's a, be- that's beautiful. I mean, it, it makes it in such a different feeling. Yes. You know, oh, I, that's beautiful. So it's, if, it's, okay. oh no, it, and, and just to kind of continue to elaborate just sure. a little bit, it's like, um, it what's um, let me see how, what's the best way I can explain it. It's much more of a spiritual emotional connection mm. of not so it's not so sad right I, I just so, I love yeah. that I, honestly like <laughs> the things we hear we're like oh th- that's yeah. I love that so yeah. for anyone now you offer um 
grief coaching services, one-on-one group sessions, and you also do speaking engagements. That is correct. If anyone is interested in, in booking with you, the best way to go is to your website. Yes. So my website is www from grief to the number two life.com. And my information is there. Mm-hmm. Um, along with the way to reach me, you are more than welcome to even book like a 30 minute conversation with me for free for the first time go around mm-hmm. um, just to see if, if I'm a good fit. Uh, because again, what I may have to offer may not something that resonates with you. You might need something a little bit much more uh, stronger. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's different. You know, I don't, I don't prescribe any medication. So if you're looking for the Zoloft and the Percocet, I don't do that. But <laughs> you, you just never know because again, everybody is in a different state of mind. I mean, mm-hmm. I've met people who have grieved uh, recent losses. And then I've met people who are still grieving the loss of a child that took place 10 years ago. So everybody grieves differently if they are allowed to grieve, mm-hmm. if they give themselves permission to grieve. So that's that's a telltale sign right there. That is step number one. Give yourself permission yeah. to grieve. Yes, without that, question. I think that is yeah. beautiful. Well, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on the Spiritual Spotlight series. You have Thanks been for having me. Such a beautiful um light just to speak with. Oh, thank you. I mean, thank honestly, you so much. I want to say thank you so much. And we'll be seeing you guys soon.